Hey guys, it's Visual Moss here. Today I'm gonna to be doing a very highly requested video and also a video that I've been planning to do for a while. So you guys all know, and if you don't know, I moved to Hawaii recently. Hawaii has an animal quarantine process. The reason that they have this process is because Hawaii is rabies free. There is no rabies on any of the islands and they want to keep it that way. So they take like extra precautions to make sure that any animal that enters any of the islands don't have rabies or have the possibility of carrying rabies at all. So it's a very lengthy and long process and I'm here to talk about it. A lot more intimidating at the beginning, but now that I look back at it, once I have it all finished and I'm over with it, it's really not that bad. I didn't really have any videos or anything like that to look upon because I was traveling with my service dog, not with pet dogs. And the process for pet dogs and service animals are actually completely different. So I didn't really have much knowledge on what I was dealing with because the people who did reach out to me to help me were mostly, I didn't really have very much help during this process because the only people who did reach out to me who were known in the process only knew about pet dog process and not the service animal process. And then there's also videos on YouTube that do talk about this process, but for pet dogs as well, or pet animals in general, not for service animals. So today I'm gonna to be talking about this process, but specific to service animals. When I did this process, I had to completely figure it out all on my own and it was very stressful, I will admit, but I got it done, it's good, we're all good. And now I'm here to help all of you whoever plan on vacationing or moving to Hawaii. I do wanna make a note before I start that yes, miniature horses are service animals as well, but I do not know what the process is like to get them to Hawaii. It might be the same, it might be a little bit different, but I don't know what their specific process is. I would always recommend calling, which I will talk about who to call in a second. I would think to call and ask them specifically on miniature horse service animal process. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about service dogs very specifically because that was my process was I was dealing with a dog and I was dealing with a service dog. So that's mostly what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. I apologize if you have a miniature horse. I'm just, I'm gonna be talking about dogs. <laughs> so moving on who to call, the place is called the Animal Quarantine Station. You can usually just go ahead and Google it and it'll give you their place, their address, and their number. And what I did at the very beginning of this whole entire process was I went ahead and called them and asked them for their service animal process. They went ahead and emailed me a whole list of everything that I would need in detail. They gave me their fax number, they gave me their phone number, and they gave me their address in case I decided to go ahead and actually mail in the paperwork instead of faxing it. But for this process, I specifically faxed it because faxing is just so much easier. But I would really recommend calling and asking for that. Even if I go ahead and tell you this process anyway, I would recommend just having that list in your email. If you called and asked them for that email, just having that list in your email just really helps because it helped me to look back at it and exactly know what I needed and in detail too. Because you have to be very, very specific when you come, like when you're getting paperwork for this process. So I actually pulled up that list and I am looking at it to be able to tell you guys all the process. The first thing that's on there is contact information. You need your address, email, and phone number, and obviously your name. You're able to pair that with the other thing that you need, which is a statement of the task service the dog provides for the user. So basically you can write a letter stating your dog's task. If you have multiple dogs, both of them can be on the same letter. And I went ahead and included my address, my email, my phone number, and my name on that paper as well. This is actually what mine looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this in case you can see it. It's my contact information. But anyway, this is what my letter looks like. I went ahead and read it in, uh, Read it. I went ahead and wrote it in paragraph form just to make it easier to read. But I literally just stated my dog's task and what they do for me. I didn't have to explain what my disabilities are or anything like that. I just explained what my dog's tasks are and what they do for me, which is perfectly okay. And that's within the right to ask what tasks the dogs perform. The next thing that you need is a rabies certificate. Basically what that is, is once your dog is given a rabies vaccination, they automatically have a certificate. Vets usually don't give it to you right away unless you ask for it. So you specifically have to ask for the rabies certificate for them to be able to give it to you, like print it out and give it to you. Basically what needs to be on the rabies certificate, which should already automatically be on there, but you always wanna double check to make sure that this stuff is on there before you send it in or try to send it in 
to Hawaii. There needs to be the date of the vaccination, the manufacturer, the lot slash serial number, and an ink signed signature by your veterinarian. These are what mine look like. These are my dog's rabies certificate that I got from the vet. I literally just called them and asked them to print it out and I went and picked it up. And it automatically already had all the information that I already needed on there, but I also of course double checked to make sure that it had you know, all the stuff that I listed off. Um, at the top, this is clouds, I believe, yeah. At the top, it says the date vaccinated and it gives the date that the dog was given the vaccination. And it has the manufacturer, the lot serial number, and all that information. And then obviously, it has a written signature by the vet themselves it's on both of the papers both of these are pretty much the same they just need to know what specific rabies vaccination your dog was given and that's really it but this paper proves that and like i said you can literally just call your vet and ask if your dog currently has a rabies vaccination you can just call for the rabies certificate and they should print it out and give it to you and like i said you always want to double check to make sure it has all of the required things on that paper so the next thing you need is your flight itinerary. I don't have my printout on my flight itinerary, but that's okay because it's pretty self-explanatory. You just go ahead and print it out and include it in the, all the paperwork before you send it in. They just need to know when and what time you are flying or arriving to Hawaii. The reason being is because they actually need to take you to the quarantine facility. It all depends on your airlines. You just need to let your airlines know that you have a service animal with you and that you will need to be transported once you arrive to Hawaii. When you arrive, they actually send a person from the airlines to come and take you to the animal quarantine facility. You just go with them, you walk with them, and you take your dog with you. It's really nice and really helpful actually, but that's pretty much what it's all about. They just need to know when you're landing and what date to expect you. The other thing that's really important to make a note as well is that the animal quarantine station closes at 4.30 p.m. usually, except for certain days they close at 5. But you do have to land at least before three or around three o'clock because it usually takes up to an hour to transport the animal to the facility. And I can vouch for that because it's a really big airport and it took us a while to walk to the animal quarantine facility. So since it, it has to take up to an hour, they also really need time to check over your dog and make sure that, you know, do their last minute test because once you bring them to the animal facility, they take the dog into the back and they do more testing on it to make sure that it doesn't have rabies or anything like that. Some last minute things, they really have to check for the dog and your dog has to go through that process before it can be released into the, the island. So you have to make sure that you set your flight to land either at three or before three because they need to have time to transport the animal and have time to check over the animal. The next thing that honestly was the most stressful for me, but it was just because of my specific situation, but it's not that bad. <laughs> It just can be stressful or the most stressful part of the process. What you really, really need for this process is a rabies titer test or also called a Favin test. And basically what it is, it's a blood test to check your dog's rabies vaccination in their system. So it's not testing for rabies, it's testing for the rabies vaccination and see how strong it is in the immune system. It's really recommended for dogs who are over 12 months of age to take this because any dogs that are younger don't have that strong of an immune system and they can actually fail and not get a proper reading of the test. So your dog has to have a 0.5 or more score on the test to be able to pass it if they have anything less than they failed it. So I actually had to do this test twice for Storm because the first time I tried to take it when I originally planned on moving to Hawaii was in February and I took this test in January with Storm. She was only seven months old at the time so since she was a little bit younger she didn't end up passing it because her immune system is a lot weaker than if she was older. So they did say that it's possible, it is possible for a dog younger than 12 months of age to pass it, but it's not common. So I took the chance and I did it. I paid the money for the test and she didn't pass it. So I ended up having to wait until she was over 12 months of age to take the test again. Another thing that you can do that they recommended for me to do, specifically since Storm didn't pass the first time, was you can always give your dog another rabies vaccination, even if their current one isn't expired, and then wait 21 days after that vaccination, that next vaccination was given, before trying to take another test. And usually a lot of the times that helps, and that would help 
give a passing score. The whole thing is actually not every vet does the rabies titer test. So I actually had to call around at like many, many vets in my area to ask if they did the rabies titer test and like none of them did. There was only one that did and that's the one that I went to. So I didn't even end up going to my regular vet where my dogs get their vaccinations. I went to a whole separate vet just to get this test done. The reason that not every vet does it is because they actually have to take your, your dog's blood and they send it off to a lab or Tori and the lab is the one who tests for it. Basically, you just make an appointment for the rabies titer test. You bring the dogs in. They do just a regular wellness checkup to make sure that your dog is like well and fine. They pull them to the back, they draw their blood, and then they go ahead and send it off to the lab. This process can take up to like two to four weeks, usually no more than four weeks. So it is a lengthy process, it is a wait. So I would recommend doing it as soon as you can, as soon as you know that you're gonna officially be going to Hawaii because a passing score can actually last up to three years. So even if you get it, you can hold on to that for a while before you actually end up using it because it you know, doesn't expire until three years later after you get the passing score. So that's something that I would definitely recommend doing as soon as you know officially you're gonna be going to Hawaii because it is a wait. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this last minute, especially if your dog doesn't end up passing, you'll be able to have time to kind of like figure out why and like fix the situation and all that stuff. Once they get the results back, they the lab will send the information over to your vet and your vet will email you and give you a online document stating, stating, wow, stating that your dog, you know, passed or didn't pass or whatever their score was. That document is actually not what you need to send into Hawaii. So then after a little bit, usually can be two weeks after your dog passes or whatever, they mail you a form and that is the form that you need to take with you. So this is what the form looks like. This is the form that they mailed me and this is the form that you need to send into Hawaii. This is the Favin report form and this is basically what it looks like. I have two obviously for both of my dogs, but yeah, this is basically what you need. It just states your dog's score right there. So Storms was 1.15 after the second time we took it. And then Clouds was uh, 1.99. So Cloud passed pretty well, but that's because she was five years at the time when we took the test. But it just states like, you know, where you're going, what the address is of the vet that you took it at, your dog's information and microchip number. Your dog needs to have a microchip to be able to take this test. It's very important. Your dog also needs a microchip to be able to go through this quarantine facility process. So if your dog does not have a microchip, I would recommend getting one right away if you plan on going to Hawaii or in general because a microchip you can really benefit from. So they label the dogs under the microchip numbers. So it's very, very specific to the dog and that's how they label these tests. And yeah, so they always ask you for your dog's microchip number or they scan the microchip um, before they even take this test. And on top of that, with the animal quarantine facility, when you do send in the paperwork, that's how they file you is under your dog's microchip number. So it's very important to have a microchip in this process as well. So this is what it looks like. It just says Favin report form. And then like I said, you can't really see it on this paper, but on this one you can. Uh, Kansas State right there. That was the laboratory that they took it to or they sent it to. And yeah, so this is the form that you send into Hawaii. This is the form that they need to see the testing scores and all that. And it's very, very important to have this. Can be stressful, but it's a process. You got all of that paperwork. It's all good to go. You have the checklist. It's all good. Everything's good. You checked over it twice because I would recommend checking over it twice to make sure that it's all correct and all in good order. Send it in either fax it or mail it in. Um, I recommend faxing it just because they get it a little bit faster and it's just like a easier process. I faxed my paperwork in. In the email that I, I recommended from the beginning to be able to get, they give you the fax number within that email. Or if they don't, you can always call and ask for their fax number and you can get it. You have to send it in and this is specifically to service dogs, not pet dogs. 10 days prior to your arrival. So you cannot send it in 10 days within your arrival. You have to send it in 10, at least 10 days before. 
For me, I actually sent it in, I think like a month before I moved. So it was like a whole 30 days before I moved to Hawaii, but the sooner the better, because if you do end up having any issues or problems with your paperwork, it gives you time to be able to fix it. The last thing that you will need to obtain, and this is something that you do not send in. So that's why you have to get it within 30 days of arriving to Hawaii. And that is because it only, it, last for 30 days before it expires that is a health certificate so you need to have a health certificate for your dogs and getting a health certificate is very very simple um, it's literally just a wellness checkup with your vet and even i don't think every vet does health certificates but even if they don't they can literally just print the form off online and fill it out um, the form is literally just from the APHIS form, that's literally what it is. It's 7001, that's the exact form. You can literally find it online, print it out, and bring it to your vet for them to fill it out. That actually made it a lot cheaper too because a lot of vets who do specific health certificates like to price it very, very high for like no reason, I don't know why. So if you just have them print it out and fill it out, that actually makes it like a lot easier. So this is what mine looks like. This is mine, and like I said, that specific form, we literally just printed it out and they filled it out. They have to be given flea and tick medicine within like 15 days of arriving to Hawaii and it has to be put on this health certificate. So yeah, that was literally just my form. It's literally just a printout form, it's nothing specific. And they don't have to be USDA accredited to be able to, to go to Hawaii because it's not technically international, it's still within the US. It was a very interesting process, <laughs> I will say. And I mean, the paperwork for it is just like crazy. But I, you know, I tried my best, like look how thick this stack is. Like this is all the paperwork that I needed. But I tried my best to explain it all to you guys. And I really hope that that was helpful. If you have any questions, you can honestly comment down below and I will be gladly to reply back and answer if you have anything else specific that I didn't cover or if you're still confused. That's perfectly okay. Just comment down below and I will answer. All your worries will go away. <laughs> I hope so at least. I hope I can do that, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you in the next one later.